Hello and welcome to our session called Building Creative Culture Through the Pandemic. And my guest uh, today is Mainak Dhar. Mainak is an alumnus of Indian Institute of Management, Ahmedabad. He has over 25 years of experience working across blue chip and multinational organization, Procter & Gamble, General Mills. And currently Mainak is at Kimberly Clark, where he's a CEO for India and South Asia. Uh, Manak is also an avid best-selling author of over 20 books, uh, which have been translated into multiple languages, uh, French, Portuguese, Vietnam, Japanese, Turkish, and he reaches millions of readers worldwide. So Manak, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Dheeraj. We are going to have a conversation around how to build creative culture and how, how as leaders and as custodians of, uh, you know, several organizations, We've seen and managed uh, culture through pandemic times, through last two years and 18 months. Uh, you know, the learnings we've had uh, through, this, through, through this period and, and things which have changed uh, forever uh, in some sense. So Manak, uh, getting straight on the conversation, I, I want to discuss with you, I remember uh, March 2020, right? Suddenly uh, we declared work from home and we were all at home. And I woke up in the morning wondering what will 550 people of Leo Burnett wake up and do today? Right. Apart from worrying about a pandemic, which was really, really scary, a virus, which we knew little of. And while we were all concerned about health and saving ourselves from the virus, uh, you know, I wondered if a large part of this management also would be what I call a purpose. Right. I mean, from a very uh, high speed work life, you suddenly at home, not knowing what to do, you're worried. I wanted to uh, pick your brains on this whole dichotomy between purpose and care or purpose and, and empathy. And did we focus a lot and far more on care and didn't see uh, the other side, which was purpose in some sense? No, great question, Dheeraj. And uh, thanks for having me over for this chat. I think the last two years have indeed been tumultuous for everyone. I think we've all experienced ups and downs, seen things we've never seen before, experienced circumstances we've never experienced before. To the question you asked, I mean, I'll take the last bit first, which is I don't think we've over-indexed on care. I yeah. think we've actually been re-grounded in what really matters. Uh, and I think that's a positive development. I, I think, you know, when yeah. everyone collectively, as organizations, as individuals, as people, we're on a treadmill where life was predictable. There's a linear definition of success. I think the danger is we lost sight of what mattered. What ultimately mattered was your well-being, well-being of your loved ones, well-being of people around you, whether it's in your organization or the community. So if anything comes out as a positive out of all of this, I hope that's one of the positives, mm. which is all of us as leaders, as people, as human beings, being regrounded and ultimately we need to look out for each other. Sometimes the world does need the kindness of strangers. Sometimes what our employees need is not just motivational speeches and stock options. They yeah. need to feel like they're cared for and their organization and their managers actually care about them as people. So I don't think we have over-indexed. I actually think there's been a positive rebalancing. Yeah. Now, if I, if I take the other part of the question about the dichotomy between purpose and care, I'd say the sweet spot for organizations and brand is when there need not be a dichotomy. And, you know, for a long time, people have talked about the importance of purpose-led brands. I think that's actually come into stark focus over the last couple of years. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, apart from the fact that now Zoom is becoming a bad word, right? Um, <laughs> over, over, over usage. I think one of the advantages of Zoom has been that you've seen people in their home backgrounds. You, Absolutely. You, you've, you've seen them in bedrooms. You've seen them in living rooms. Absolutely. You've seen their pets coming into course and you've seen the children <laughs> come into the course. You're right. It's just made the whole environment Absolutely. far more human. Uh, and it's... Okay to have empathy uh, if, if you didn't have. Uh, so that's been one of the advantages. Uh, I wanted to pick up another uh, conversation thread on this manner and the whole divide between say collaboration and remote. Mm -hmm. Right. And now that we are kind of seemingly right. coming out uh, through parts of the tunnel, there might still be more pandemic tunnels uh, ahead of us. We don't know. Perhaps there are. Uh, but now that we are coming out, right, and uh, I mean, we we kind of started coming back to office uh, and, and there's a huge joy of, you know, of chance collisions uh, in uh, in the corridors and, and just calling somebody uh, without a scheduled meeting and having a chat and having coffee and so on and so forth. There's a certain joy of meeting face to face and collaboration and us being an advertising creative shop.
stop, right? There's obviously uh, much more need for collaboration. At the same time, we know that there are some things which can be done uh, in remote. I mean, I, for one thing that when you're doing something which is just by yourself, you're writing an article or or you're writing copy or you're thinking of an ad, you could probably do it by yourself. You don't need to be in office. But there are things that need sharing, collaboration, and that's best done uh, when you're face to face. Where is your mind on this one? I mean, we obviously know that it is going to be hybrid. I mean, there's no yeah. uh, there's no debate on that. But what form of hybrid, what, what will define hybrid? How much collaboration, how much remote? Uh, uh, do you have a point of view on how this will pan out? Yeah, I guess, you know, one thought, and this may not be true for all industries and all organizations, but if I think of the kind of world you and I live in, where success is all about building brands, success is building yeah. ideas, not as a pursuit in and of itself, but to serve consumers. Uh, if I take that as a starting point for all of us who are involved in building brands, I actually feel we make a mistake when we think of the discussion as office or home. Because ultimately, yeah. the most important connection that we've missed over the last couple of years is that intimate connection with the consumer, meeting consumers, seeing consumers shop, seeing consumers interact with our brands. That's where ideas come from. Yeah. Uh, so I think, you know, as I think of the future moving forward, uh, to be honest, for me personally, it's almost irrelevant whether you're in office or at home. The question is, magic happens through shared experiences and connections when you're engaging on ideas and insights related to the consumer. So, you know, what I miss and what I want to do much more of is just seeing stores together with team members, going to consumers' homes, understanding how they're interacting with our categories, understanding externally what's happening. And I think the best ideas come when teams are able to experience that in a shared manner. So I think there's a lot of magic of getting people together, which is those shared experiences to build consumer intimacy and empathy. And the second part is just to build a sense of community. Uh, relationships do matter. I mean, teams are able to get ideas, buzz barriers when they're building those relationships, which to some extent happens in a better way when you do get some time together. So I would say the way forward for me, each organization will need to define what hybrid means for them. The way I would think of it is be together when it makes sense to either interact with consumers, build consumer empathy, build relationships, build community, do joint problem solving. There's a whole lot of things which I think the last two years have taught us that can easily be done at home. So if you're attending a video con with international colleagues, why would you sit early morning or late night in office all by yourself? You may as well be at home. <laughs> yeah, hey, we absolutely. have all been yeah. there and done it. And yeah, why, yeah. Oh my God, why did I yeah. waste those late nights sitting in office doing a call with somebody when, you know, we could just have been at home. Or yeah. if you're, you know, preparing a document or a presentation, you could just be at home. Uh, and I think that's where I think each team will need to figure out what works for it. But uh, in all these conversations, I actually feel the thing we need to really get back on is building that consumer empathy and intimacy, less about office and home. I want to discuss a bit on uh, on Manak and you, you've just uh, with a book uh, on, uh, you know, leadership lessons. Uh, so from there and other stuff, what's been the toll or learning on leadership through the last two years, uh, right? Because a lot's been uh, spoken about employees and people, the great uh, resignation and how uh, everybody's perhaps either disenchanted or rethinking their priorities. Uh, but as leaders, we know there's been tough running an organization. I mean, personally, for me to run an organization, which is about creative culture through a Zoom uh, for last two years, uh, right? What are the big leadership lessons uh, that we should take home uh, from these 18 months, two years? Yeah, no, I guess uh, the big thing I I reflect on, Thiraj, is what makes for great leadership probably hasn't changed. I, I think what we've realized over the last couple of years is a few of those leadership muscles have just become much more important. I think the most important one is adaptability. Um, and, you know, if you think of the kind of chaos we've all been through, where there's no playbook of what do you do when there's a pandemic? Yeah. What do you do when markets are closed down? What do you do when a number of your colleagues are sick? I, I think, you know, leaders have thrived when they have approached it with not a preconceived notion of, I know what the playbook is, but saying, look, I'm happy to learn. I'm happy to adapt. I'm happy to embrace the unknown. And I think leaders who have been paralyzed by uh, unfamiliar circumstances have suffered. Leaders yeah. who have to some extent said, look, that's fine. 
there are things outside my locus of control. The world will throw things at us. How do we quickly adapt and pivot other ones who have thrived and organizations that have thrived? So I think adaptability is one. The second big one I think that has come into focus is empathy. I mean, yeah. when you talk about mass resignation and so on, I think the biggest issue is, and you talked about, you know, us getting a glance at each other's homes, figuring out what's going on. I think there have been some leaders who've just been tone deaf. They just expect the world to operate the way it did yeah. without realizing that fundamentally things have changed for their people. Their people are under different stresses. Their people's expectations may have changed. And I think for leaders to be in touch with what's happening in their people's lives, where might those expectations be changing? Where might they need help in a way they didn't need it before? I, I think has been the second big leadership muscle that I think has probably been brought more into focus over the last couple of years. Yeah, no, definitely. In fact, for us, the biggest learning has been, uh, Manak, that through these uh, two years, I think collectively we've come so close as an organization, exactly. which we would have never been, right? Because no, we, we would otherwise yeah. always be in a Delhi and a Mumbai and a Bangalore. Yeah, yeah. I mean, today we have 50 leaders joining a leadership call every Tuesday without fail for the last 18 months. Uh, 10 30 a.m right yeah. and we discuss all kinds of issues what we need what we need yeah. to do so on and so forth i couldn't have imagined having done that uh in a pre-pandemic situation hybrid we're coming back we're still continuing uh that yeah. ritual or that muscle and the whole spirit of camaraderie of you know everybody standing shoulder to shoulder and saying i will help you yeah. get past this i think that's one big thing that as a culture we would have not developed in such intensity if it wasn't for these two years. So that, that segues me to, uh, to I think, our concluding uh, point of conversation that, I mean, human human behavior is notoriously uh, driven by muscle memory, right? And yeah. and we are prone to springing back to what, what we've always been taught. Uh, but a quick sense of what do you think uh, is being changed forever that i mean we're not going to go go back on that at all and what are the key learnings uh, coming out of this tunnel in terms of maintaining cultures running cultures what does this new culture look like and what are the things which have changed forever and are not going back at all it's very hard to say nothing will happen forever if anything <laughs> the last two years have taught us yeah. we were just yeah. never say never who would have imagined yeah. we've gone through a global pandemic so I, you know, I, I would hate to be the guy who makes these fearless predictions that tomorrow I'm proven wrong. But <laughs> but uh, I, I think a couple of things which I think fundamentally have changed in people's minds. I think one is, if I think about the assumptions on where work can get done, I think has changed. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's a very powerful force to harness because the whole idea of this is my office, this is my team has been upended. And that's a wonderful opportunity to harness talent and capability, no matter where they sit. And depending, of course, on the kind of role you do, but whether you're a global organization, you can tap into people who aren't necessarily sitting in a particular office. I think our eyes have really been opened on uh, truly a virtual community of people can come together and solve issues. I think that's something which I think will open up a number of changes and possibilities. I, I think the second thing that I think has changed is just from an employee standpoint, I think how they think of work and life, I think has changed. Yeah. Now see, there might be organizations who say, no, you need to come back to office all the time. They may say that, they may enforce it, but believe you me, those employees are going to be thinking in their mind. So this is what I learned I could have done differently, to your point. Yeah. Uh, but I hope those things don't change because I think they're important learnings for them from the last two years. Yeah, no, that's absolutely fantastic. And if I may just add, I think there are two, two two values, uh, Manak, which I see that we've added hugely as a set of people. One is the idea of resilience, That's right? True. And having been true. through collectively what we've been through, yeah. I think this whole generation, this whole race is, is come out far more resilient. We now know when to duck, how to save ourselves, <laughs> when to come out, right? I mean, That's this true. is a muscle we've developed. We never kind of had this muscle. And second, I would say a sense of optimism. Uh, right, because now we know that this too shall pass. I mean, uh, we just have to, uh, you know, kind of put our heads down and get through with it. And I would say the two really, really very valuable muscles uh, that we've developed collectively, both in life and at work. No, absolutely. No, completely agree with you. In fact, I'm a big Malcolm Gladwell fan. And in one of his books, yeah. he talks about, you know, people who survived the uh, blitz in World War II on Britain. And he says, that when you come face to face with adversity and you emerge, you actually emerge much more optimistic and much more resilient. 
And yeah. I think that's exactly what you're talking about. And then that kind of gets hardwired into how you think about life. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. So on that note, to to the generation resilience, thank you so much, Manak, for doing this. No, thanks, Dheeraj. It was a pleasure chatting with you.